This week we will be looking at numbers. Numbers are important in walking for fitness. Numbers are important whenever you're engaged in a sport. Numbers like resting heart rate, your heart rate at rest, pulse taken at your wrist. Numbers like the number of dogs you meet along the way. I'm just kidding. Numbers like your blood pressure if you can get it. Numbers like your heart rate after you've walked a mile. Useful for certain types of measurement of your VO max. Volume of oxygen, maximum capacity to process, basically. VO max is one of the most fundamental measures of cardiovascular fitness and endurance. Numbers that are good vary with age. But numbers matter. And so in exercise sports science, we spend some time looking at some of our basic fitness numbers where we can. Other numbers are if you can get your weight. Your weight doesn't tell you much of anything. What's more important is body fat, and that takes a composition measuring device that uh, probably won't be available to you. Uh, may not even be available at public health. But so some numbers we'll be asking you to get will be uh, voluntary, optional, because you may not be able to get them. But uh, do learn to take your pulse from your wrist with a couple fingers. Don't use your thumb. And uh, both your resting heart rate and your post-exercise heart rate after you've walked your mile. Uh, I hope that that will uh, be something you can easily get. If you can get your weight, do report your weight. If you know your height and your weight, you can report your body mass index. Another, a crude measure of whether or not you might be overweight, but body mass index has to be used with care because uh, if you happen to be like a bodybuilder, you'll have a high body mass index due to your high muscle mass. Body fat is a better measure, but takes more, like, more uh, sophisticated equipment to measure. At the national campus, I do have a body composition measuring scale, a Tanita, in my office, but, uh, but whether that would only be useful for those who happen to be coming on campus for their lab classes and not for the rest of you. But uh, we'll be able to use some of these numbers, like your resting heart rate and your post-exercise heart rate and your age, uh, possibly height and weight if we can get it, but we can use some of these basic numbers to get other numbers like your VO max and determine how fit you are for your age. And there'll be some other videos that will lay out the definitions of some of these terms I'm using in this video. So here in week two, we're looking at numbers, your numbers. It's good to know your numbers when you're young, because then when you're older, you'll know what has changed. What matters more than anything is change over time. If you go up a pound or down a pound, you haven't lost or gained weight. One or two pounds is meaningless. What matters is a trend over 5, 10, 15, 20 years. That's what really matters. So those are some things to bear in mind as you, uh, as you get a hold of some of your numbers here at the beginning of the term. Also, the length of time to go a mile is important. There's another test. It's a 1.5-mile test, and you can try that if you want. There will be links in, uh, uh, in the assignment and... Uh, uh, if all goes well, I'll get some links in down below this 
to some online calculators where you can calculate some of these different values. That said, uh, go out there and see what kind of numbers you can get. Now, do, do be careful. If you are really out of shape, one mile could be difficult. I think some of you might have watched a video posted, possibly, on, uh, uh, if you, depending on the sequence in which you're doing this course, and uh, a young woman who does have uh, excess weight was trying to walk a mile in the sun in Missouri. Uh, and that's, uh, that's not advised. Walk if you can in the early morning or the evening when it's cooler. Uh, you don't want to dehydrate yourself. You don't want to suffer from heat exhaustion or heat stroke. These are things we'll cover later. But don't walk in the middle of the heat of the day unless you are in fantastic shape and are used to the heat. But uh, it's better to walk in the early morning or the evening when it's cooler. If you have a track that's safe and secure, you can certainly walk at night. Well, with that said, uh, welcome to a week of numbers.